Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today we want to return to the thorny subject of Synology Drive Media. For those that aren't aware, the new 2025 generation of devices from Synology have got a much stricter verification policy for drives to be used in their system. We've covered it in a bunch of other videos, but because Synology are rolling out so many solutions in their 2025 lineup, and for the most part, they seem to be gearing towards their own storage media. Perhaps you're watching this in the future and they've added a few other drives by now. I thought it time to really deep dive the whole Synology Drive media setup. What could go wrong? Yeah, things got out of hand very fast. Now, before we go any further, we've got to knock a few bits of disclaimer out of the way. Number one, Synology have supplied all of this storage media. I've been doing more and more tests and discussing third party and first party media on the 2025 series that I reached out to Synology and said, can you send me a pile of media? Because I need to know what makes your media so special, particularly when it comes to the fact that there are other drive media in the market and the brand sent this media in order for me to see that. And I'll be honest, fair play to them because there are some real criticisms in this video that we're going to go through later on so i just wanted to acknowledge that early doors that this is being done with them sending the drive media but they're not paying for this video they've got no control over this video this is purely my own thoughts and perspective but we also have to acknowledge right now that so long as you don't make these drives now i've tried to dig into the m.2 nvme media here but Notwithstanding, they only, um, you know, they've packaged these devices and they are running on Fizon controllers, by the way, so much like a lot of other brands in the market, including, you know, the likes of Seagate, who use uh, controllers that come from other manufacturers out there. I can pretty much say with confidence that Synology doesn't make in-house any of this drive media. Now, perhaps I'm going to be wrong about that and maybe the brand will correct me on the SSDs, but I can definitely say when it comes to the hard drives, they definitely don't. They uh, Toshiba are involved when it comes to the enterprise grade drives and that goes all the way up to their highest capacities. And when it comes to the plus series drives, these drives are Seagate drives. Indeed, when you take a closer look at the plus series drives, you can even see that they've got the Seagate branding on the bottom of the drive there. Now, none of this is secret. They're not keeping it secret. We've known for a while that the Plus series of drives are Seagate Ironwolf drives with a Synology badge and Synology firmware on board. But that is precisely what makes it ever so puzzling for users when right now at the time of recording, the DS925 Plus and other 2025 generation devices coming very, very soon do not support Seagate Iron Wolf drives. Now, again, the brands say this will change over time and they are, you know, re-verifying a lot of this drive media for their newer generation. Make of that what you will. I think there's a lot of marketing spiel in there. And I think even if they do add WD, Seagate and other drive media to the compatibility listings now, kind of the damage is done for a lot of users. That should have been the policy early doors. And the fact that the, a lot of this drive media launch isn't on those verification lists is problematic because a lot of users would go, why did you leave it to the last minute to add them? But that leads to the other problem a lot of users have. If these two drives here in my hands are effectively the same drive mechanically, why is the pricing so all over the place, depending on where you are in the world? Now, I'm working on a larger article on NAS Compares that's hopefully done and linked in the description below. But if I switch over to the work in progress article here on my screen, you're able to see right now that I've listed there utilizing B&H, because I wanted to go for a uniform website, which website listed um, those drives. And as you can see, the pricing there for the individual types of Synology hard drive there, you know, they, they start off okay, but the minute you go into the enterprise sector, some of this pricing is sort of wild. For a 16 TB drive, and again, that is the enterprise class one there, so that's 550 uh, terabyte workload there, uh, 7200 RPM and five year warranty there. But the pricing structure, the price per terabyte is sort of crazy town banana pants. And that extends, by the way, uh, particularly when you go to the SSD media there. And I know some of these drives like the 3510, which have got a uh, power loss protection and some of the SATA drives, which have got one drive right per day. Uh, endurance factor there sound pretty good. This terabyte, um, uh, this price per terabyte rate in there uh, cost is kind of bonkers. Now, when you break that down, 
This is where you see that pricing sort of go wild. Because there on screen, as you can see, I've broken down the pricing of Synology drives versus that of third-party drives there. So we can see the Synology drives here on the left-hand side of the screen at each individual capacity. And these, by the way, the 3300 are the value series. And I've compared them against both Seagate and WD NAS hard drives at individual capacities each. And as you can see, the price difference is there at least on the value series from Synology, the price seems to sit for the most part around the 10% mark on average. Some a little bit lower at 5%, some of them a bit higher there at 15%, but on average between 5 to 10% price difference if you put those all against one another. However, once you go into the prosumer sector, things go insane. This is the HAT5300 series. So again, that is that Toshiba drive under the bonnet. And although Toshiba drive pricing is sort of wild, um, sticking with B&H, I went to Seagate Iron Wolf Pro. Again, both of these drives are 5500 TB um, uh, workload there. I will say the WD Red Pro is at 300. But again, look at that price differential there. Again, both of them 7200 five-year warranty. It is just the Iron Wolf Pro drive there that has the same workload rating as that. But still, look at that price differential. And the minute we go down into the Enterprise SAS drives, where I compared the Synology SAS series against that of Seagate Iron Wolf, uh, sorry, the Seagate XOS SAS drive series. Again, if we're getting into the larger capacities, look at that price differential between these. And again, all of these prices are available as of the 14th of May 2025 on B&H. But it is the SSDs where we really see crazy price distinctions. Uh, we see, for example, there, that 480 gig drive there. Again, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. This is a one drive right per day drive. So I went ahead and compared it against Kingston drives, the DC600M. These are one drive right per day and they have power loss protection built in at the M2 level as well. And look at that price differential there between them. That is absolutely insane price differences between them. And regardless of Synology NAS's being a fantastic system in terms of software, I will say these prices here, I would love to understand what exactly is the justification for these price differences between Synology drives and third-party alternatives in the market? I even compared against NAS branded drives rather than just going for lesser used drives like Kingston drives in the marketplace. But next, we're going to talk about those performance stats. Now, performance between Synology drives and third-party alternatives in the market, well, Again, with two ways to look at this. We could look at the synthetic numbers uh, where we do our own testing, or we could look at the advertised synthetic numbers because we can't really do average real world testing without it being unrepresentative of nine out of 10 people. But I went ahead and did two kinds of tests for each kind of storage drive that I was utilizing. I used each of the Synology drives um, in a USB dock externally. The M.2s will come to later on. And via a USB 3 external uh, dock, I went ahead and performed AJA and um, crystal disk mark tests for each of the Synology drives and alternative drives of a similar specification on a Windows test environment there. And as you can see from the test on screen, as we go through all of them, for the most part, the Synology drive was either the same as or less than the third party drives I utilized there. Now, we have to at least add the caveat that the non-Synology drives had a more variable firmware. That is to say that the firmware inside those drives weren't designed specifically for a Synology system. They were designed for general server use. Whereas the Synology drives with that firmware, presumably that firmware has been geared specifically towards a Synology NAS system. And therefore, the resulting performance have to be, when used in a PC environment, have to be caveated because we're using a drive that Synology themselves say is geared towards their own environment. So I went ahead and installed each of these drives inside Synology's own systems. I used the DS923 Plus, as I had to be able to use a system that will allow me to use non-Synology verified drives. Now, when I did that, I used Synology's own internal storage manager benchmark. I went ahead and made sure that the operating system was on a completely separate drive, so there wouldn't be any overhead on the drives as I tested them. And then I went ahead and tested the SATA SSD and the SATA hard drive, and the SATA enterprise grade hard drive from Synology and then compared that performance against Seagate Exos, Seagate Ironwolf and the Kingston DC 680, uh, 600M SSD to see how they'd compare. And again, 
they were very comparable and there was a bit of give and take, but the performance differential, at least on the benchmark provided by Synology's own system, didn't give any huge advantage on the Synology media, media over that of third parties. Likewise, benchmarking the M.2 NVMEs, utilizing Synology's own M.2 NVMe versus that of third party drives in the market there, again, factoring in the fact that Synology drives there have a huger priority towards uh, durability than they are against performance. It has to be said that, again, numbers were better on third party drives out there using Synology's own benchmarking tool there. Again, this is on the 923, not on the modern 2025 generation system, and the benchmark is not indicative of 24 seven typical use, but still nonetheless, that was within those test environments. But what about the reported online numbers from data sheets from all of these brands? Well, as you won't be too surprised to hear, the numbers were pretty similar when looking at Synology's own storage media versus that of Seagate and WD. Again, we've got the first bracket here. This first bracket is made up of the regular or value class NAS series drives. And again, we saw higher performance numbers, as you can see, ever so slightly on the Seagate, but certainly on that WD Red Plus drive there. Again, very similar workload and pretty much similar in those other fields. But when we went into the enterprise grade drives and we look at the HAT3310 series there, which goes up to 16 TB, although I will say there is an 18 and a 20 TB, but I wasn't able to test them or get um, comparable data uh, across them without sort of meddling around with some of the variables between them, the numbers were pretty darn similar across uh, 281 to 285 there. So I'm, again, these are all of these are synthetic benchmarks really. But then when we look at the SAS series there, again, largely the same, but again, this is where we start talking about some of those capacities because Synology's range of hard drives there, I would say, although they're covering the capacities against those different uh, areas of their portfolios there, presumed because the large capacity is required, um, a higher spindle speed, because that's really what you get, even from Seagate, WD, Toshiba, or anyone. I will say the range of capacities is clearly, and it's already been discussed, much, much, much higher on third parties. And I know that is an area of criticism that people have towards Synology Drive Media there. And there are comparable workloads, uh, endurance ratings across those drives. Now, when we look at the SSDs, that is where we see wild inconsistencies uh, in between third party and first party media. Synology's uh, 5221 and there is the 5210 uh, series of drives of SATA. The capacity is going up quite high. And remember, those are the ones which had kind of the insane price point. But although the read write performance on SATA is obviously going to be very similar to these drive media here, I will say again, not only was the uh, drive rights per day on the DC actually potentially higher. We even saw one at three drive rights per day at the higher capacity. But when we went into the M.2 NVMEs, the M.2 NVMEs, again, are just very disappointing there when it comes to uh, the performance. Now, that is an irregularity that I'm going to have to go to, but the actual uh, read-write performance on these drives is significantly lower uh, than what you're seeing here on screen. I'm going to have to dig in, but these are actually between 800 and 1000 megabytes per second write when there are significantly higher performance M.2 NVMe drives in the market there uh, rather than going for the Synology offering. Yes, it leverages itself more towards endurance as mentioned, but still there are better options in the market. Which brings us to the big question, why does Synology Media exist at all? Because most users are going to say, I don't want to go for a Synology drive when I've been using WD, when I've been using Toshiba or Seagate all of these years. And Synology Media is just those brands with a different firmware and a different label and a higher price tag. Now, again, until Synology add more drives to the verification policy and the supported drive list of the new 2025 series, that is an inarguable argument because right now, Synology only providing their own drives right now means that the 2025 series of devices has suddenly become a lot more expensive for a lot of users. And Synology can't really justify that. They can turn around and say that if they have their own media, they can design the device around that media. And there, I guess, is an element of truth to that. One could also argue that there are users that want simplicity, certainly businesses that just want to know what works because they don't want to spend ages learning. I understand some of those businesses may have a system admin that can do the job for them, but there is slightly an argument for that. But still, nonetheless, at the time of recording, given that third-party alternative media is still not on the 2025 listing of supported media for 
the 1825 Plus, the DS1525 Plus. Hell, the new rack mounts that are rolling out there, I still can't help but feel that Synology storage media isn't justifiable right now. Is it good media? Yeah, it is. I would say they've picked good, solid drives for their enterprise, their standard class, going for M.2 NVMEs, not only that support power loss protection, but also have high durability is appealing to me. Also, knowing if I was looking for the easiest, simplest setup, knowing that I could just get a Synology drive that goes inside the Synology system, I can't deny there are going to be users out there that want that. But making that the only game in town is not the right way to go about this. Likewise, though I'm fortunate enough to live in a region where I can get hold of pretty much all of the Synology drive media across multiple retail outlets, I know that is not the case for everyone. And there are plenty of regions out there where buying Synology media either has longer lead times or even worse pricing than what we've seen. That's why I went with B&H earlier on during the price comparisons, because that was the only website I could find that consistently held stock of all of the Synology drive media Whereas every other retail outlet I could find had gaps. They either had only the new model IDs, but not the old model IDs, or they only had some of the capacities. And in some casings, the pricing, because of auto feeds from distribution, some of the pricing was wild because it was automated. And therefore, unlike um, Seagate and WD, who have a much, much tighter handle on not only price feeds with distribution, but also with regard to the availability of their drive media globally, it makes Although Synology Drive Media are robust, you know, a solid lineup of storage media, it's not the most widely available. And lastly, although I have heaped praise on the durability and the build quality of the M.2s that Synology provide in their SNV series, I will say they are still sadly lacking a higher performance, at least at the time of recording, M.2 NVMe option. And with the brand talking now about M.2 NVMe U.2 U.3 media and stuff like that with um, SAS support and things like the PAS flash system, Synology needs to double down on this storage media selection with performance drives. They need more M.2 NVMEs that are gonna allow people to take advantage of that because that is something people want. And if you're gonna roll out solutions like the 925 and more that have got M.2 NVMEs in the base, you need to make sure that these systems allow me to harness the true capabilities of those slots. Seriously, if you are watching this analogy, and I assume you are, let these drives speak for themselves. For the most part, these are really, really good storage drives. And unfortunately, because of the way that verification is being implemented in the 2025 series, it's making users feel like they're being forced to use this media instead of choosing to use this media over alternatives in the market. And for whatever reason that you are doing it for, pro you know, in terms of uh, streamlining it, efficiency or for profitability, that is going to leave users with a bad taste in their mouth and therefore not wanting to not only choose drives they feel they're being forced to buy, even though for the most part they are good drives, but also therefore making them reconsider their entire purchase. The storage media for the most part, as I say, is good. I'm not sure I feel about there being a non- performance led M.2, but for the other part, the drive media itself is solidly put together and you've chose wisely, I would say for the most part, the drive companies that have built these drives for you. But sort the pricing out on the enterprise drives, sort the availability out, and overall, add more drives to the verified support pile on the 2025 series, because until you do that, any virtue these drives have is going to be heavily eclipsed by the negativity of drive lock-in. But thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, let's discuss this more in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.